you have to cast your mind back and think what the, the atmosphere was both here and internationally in 1984. The Cold War was very much at its height. Um, the Soviet Union was seen as a real threat and uh, we had an American president who wanted to see off that threat, um, a prime minister in Margaret Thatcher who was shoulder to shoulder, we heard that somewhere recently, with the American president. In the summer of 1984, the east of England became a focal point for campaigners who were opposed to American nuclear weapons being based on British soil. Protests were staged outside many US air bases, such as this one at RAF Lakenheath. Two men were brought back straight away, a third climbed onto a concrete bunker and stayed there for ten minutes. One of the main centres of protest was RAF Molesworth in Cambridgeshire where it was believed the US Air Force was planning to sight the latest addition to its nuclear armory, cruise missiles. The conflict and the events at Molesworth uh, really encapsulated uh, the conflict nationally between those who saw provocation in deploying more nuclear missiles to aim at the Soviet, Soviet Union and those who said, uh, we've got to do it to show that we're strong and face them down. In August, hundreds of peace protesters came to Molesworth to hold a week-long summer festival. One of the organisers was Green Party activist David Taylor. What exactly are you seeking to achieve? Uh, eventually, we want to stop deployment of crews, which is scheduled for 1988. We want to build up a campaign starting here that's actually going to involve thousands and thousands of people. Remember, there's some 60% of the population opposed deployment of crews. Now, if they were to actually come here and really demonstrate their opposition, then I think we could certainly stop them. 20 years on, David's returned to Molesworth to remember the events of that summer. Well, it's all changed a bit. I'm trying to work out where my teepee was, and I think it must have been roughly here somewhere. This was called Admin Alley. This was all the sort of Green Party types, you know, the sort of more political ones. We were all along here. This piece of woodland became the nerve centre where David planned the second stage of the campaign. Basically, we tried to persuade people to stay on. And uh, we were successful. We got about 100 people. I remember going around with a stencil just saying, we're staying. And then we would spray that on the side of people's trucks and on the, people's, on the backs of their jackets, generating a, a, a feeling, a momentum towards an actual occupation and not just a, a one-off festival. A whole community, the Rainbow Village, grew up on land around Molesworth. A Rainbow Village, like any other village, I mean, you had friends in the village and in the evening we'd go out and have dinner with our friends. And I can remember coming down here, because I had one or two friends actually on Peace Lane, I would come down and have dinner and you can just picture the scene with and sort of caravans and buses and things with sort of, you know, the dinner is, is, is fires are lit and there's sort of smoke coming out and there's a smell of cooking. Um, it was very friendly. But as summer turned to winter, the protesters realised their days at the base were numbered. With the government preparing to evict them, they decided to do all they could to gain maximum publicity for their cause. Our whole strategy was based around getting Molesworth on the front pages. Um, we had to create another Greenham. We had to open a second front um, to demonstrate that the whole campaign was moving forward, that it was getting larger and it was becoming unstoppable. Um, our priority here, therefore, was to create the biggest eviction we could possibly create. They stayed at the base through the winter. But finally, on a February night in 1985, the police and army moved in to evict David and his fellow protesters. It was a huge operation, but they were determined to delay the eviction as long as possible. What I can remember is delaying the, um, the evacuation of the site from the two hours which the military initially gave us up to 13 hours in the end. In the background, you would have seen um, plumes of smoke coming up from people's homes that were being uh, um, torched. You will have heard the sound of JCBs as they went and they smashed up buses and caravans and things of that kind. It was quite a hairy night, I have to say. 
Um, but at the end of the day, we were successful because we were able to delay it for the full 13 hours. And we were all still here when uh, famous Michael Heseltine turned up in his flak jacket sometime the following morning. Today, the American Air Force still has a base at Molesworth, but three years after the protesters were evicted, the crew's missiles were also removed, following an arms control treaty between America and the Soviet Union. David feels he and his fellow protesters played their part in changing government policy. One of the key lessons of this is that people can win. Actually, even on a massive issue of so-called national security, we generated front-page headlines around the whole story, and we opened up a whole new front in the campaign against cruise missiles. It was successful, we know, at the end of the day, because cruise missiles were sent back to America.